Welcome to the Phase World Podcast, engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. This is your host, Fei Wu. On this podcast, you will meet a group of sung and unsung heroes who are willing to share their stories with you and what it means to them to live a happy and meaningful life. From Academy Award winner Christina Reed to Wall Street Journal best-selling author Claudia Azula Altucher, Hall of Fame martial artist Michael J. O'Malley, renowned jazz musician Ralph Peterson Jr., director of innovation Matt Lindley, Steinway artist George Coe, and many others. Every one of my guests brings unique perspectives that form an interplay of careers, explorations, personal philosophy, and being in the moment. Then my website, faceworld.com, has a page dedicated to every guest where you can find show notes, links, tactics, tools, ideas you can use. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my guest today. His name is Tom Seaborn. Tom is a professor, author, fitness coach, martial artist, cyclist. In part two, we'll be focusing on personal life, goals, and, and even challenges as a fitness educator today. I offer Tom some of my own advice on uh, how an athlete like himself could potentially take advantage of social media, but beyond Facebook and Twitter, um, for example, places or channels such as Quora or Ubersense, and how to influence people at a national and international level without extensive travel. And that was an important factor for Tom. But you know what? There is no better era than the one we're in today to influence, educate, and establish authentic connections right from our homes. I am super excited to be sharing this episode with you all. However, I do want to apologize in advance for the sound quality. Tom lives in Texas and uh, was very busy at the time, so we quickly jumped on the call. So it was not recorded via Skype, but a regular phone call. If you have any questions, things that you don't catch in this audio, please head over to my website, faceworld.com, and you'll be able to see Tom's episode right on the homepage. So thank you in advance for staying with Phase World Podcast. And if you have any feedback, comments, please let me know. Please welcome Tom Seaborn. So tell me about the book that you you were working on six months ago. Yeah, Um, the the one that was completed, uh, the book is called The Complete Idiot's Guide to Quick Total Body Workout. And uh, the, the company that uh, contacted me for this is a very prolific company out of New York. And when they put you on a deadline, uh, you know, you keep that deadline. In fact, when I first started working with them, uh, they asked me to do three pocket idiot guides in three months, so one a month, mm-hmm. which was a, a real quick timeline turnaround for me. And so I realized that when I worked with this company, that uh, there's no, no time for anything else. Mm-hmm. Pretty much deep sleep, work on the book, and do my day job. And so when I finish the, the final one, uh, then uh, I'm always looking for another project. And I hadn't, hadn't really found one, but, but one walked up to me, which was uh, this uh, award that our college, what we do is uh, our college nominates someone each year. Mm-hmm. for this, uh, it's a Texas teaching award, basically. And so the last time anybody had won this award for our college was 25 years ago. Wow. So I, I thought I had no chance. You know, I submitted my materials, and uh, nothing went right with the submission. And, you know, I thought, you know, I have no chance at all. Well, I, I let my wife open the envelope, which you know, I thought was a rejection letter, but the envelope when she opened she said, oh my God, and you know, it comes with, it comes with a, a rather hefty stipend, so we were both so excited, and, and the college is excited because uh, it's, a, it's 
the Texas honor. So anyway, with that came a lot of uh, speaking engagements, and, and so that's kind of kept me busy a little bit. But uh, ironically, just like you know, with the question you asked, yeah, I, I'm looking really hard. I, I'm trying to find something. Here, it, the kind of things I like to try to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my profession, day-to-day, uh, -day is helping people become fit and stay fit. And so, uh, as, as you asked earlier, you know, what, what do I do kind of on a day-to-day? -day? It's, it's trying to find ways that I can do this on both a local mm -hmm. and a national level. So, uh, previously I had done books, videos, TV shows, things like that. And some, some of these type of endeavors require intense time and effort, and others, similar to doing a podcast, are, are just interviews. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, I'm kind of in that intermediate waiting stage. And uh, yeah, if, if something comes my way, I'm going to jump on it because I actually have time for an opportunity like that. This is amazing. Just by listening to you for four or five minutes, I feel like I'm just instantly drawn towards you. Everything you say is just really comes from your heart, and it's just so, so even keeled, and it's very soothing for some reason. And this is not quite what I expected. You know, when you see these fitness guru, which you're clearly one, your PhD and and you've looked at um, you know, physical conditioning from a very scientific lens and not just being on TV and kind of putting a brand on, on top of all that. Um, but you're very calming and, and it's just in incredible. I'm so, so glad that Mr. O'Malley introduced you to me. And one of the areas, I think, when you said locally, nationally, I'm almost th thinking internationally as well, one of the um, surprising factor I found out with my podcast is I've already spoken to, quote unquote, to people from 15, 20 other countries outside of the U.S. So you never know who will be listening to your podcast and fitness in general right now, I was thinking, has been one of the most popular topics on earth at the moment. So it must be exciting to be in your fields. And not only that, I look at your resume and some of the things you've accomplished, I was so excited to talk to you because you're not someone who is 18, 19, so excited to reflect upon both of the years of experience, but you've been athletic and fit your entire life and you can speak to your life and, you know, relate your experience to, to people across generations. So how, how does that make you feel? Do you feel like it's a responsibility? Is it an interest? Is it an excitement for you to tap into? Wow, that's, that, that was so nice of you to say. Very, <laughs> very, very kind words. And I, never, I never really thought of it that way because when I was 11 years old, uh, my, my dad was stationed in Okinawa, and that's where I first uh, picked up karate. Where I, I went to a karate dojo, and... I was just amazed and mesmerized, and with that, at that same time, I started playing tennis just for fun, and I realized that these two uh, activities would be a huge part of my life. I just, I spent hours and hours each day just practicing and practicing, so with, with the question you just asked, these, these two activities became a passion, and then these activities just uh, blossomed into others, and mm -hmm. pretty soon I, I realized I knew that fitness was going to be my life first, just because I was passionate about doing it, and then when I came back to the States just a couple of years later, mm -hmm. uh, I started a little karate club in my in my garage, just kids in the neighborhood where I would teach them karate, because it was, you know, relatively unknown We're in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. This was in the... Gosh, I think this was oh, in the early 70s, very early 70s. And so, first of all, the actual activity itself was a passion, and then teaching became a passion. And, and then when I went to I went to Penn State University, and uh, as I was going to school, I didn't know what my major was going to be. And, and sure enough, I realized, wow, I, I want to be able to teach karate 
for the rest of my life. And uh, this, this is where I got involved with Taekwondo. At, at first, uh, it was karate, and, and, and I know you're, um, you're very well skilled in Taekwondo. And as I, as I remember, you. you're a third degree black belt. <laughs> yes, I am. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and so you know, there's a difference between karate and Taekwondo, but which mm-hmm. uh, I was introduced the competitive aspects of Taekwondo, and uh, yeah, that's how I finally got to meet Michael O'Malley, and uh, so yeah, uh, the, the question you asked, basically the answer is, uh, even though I, I don't feel like, kind of like, you're almost saying I'm a role model, I don't feel like that, I feel like mm-hmm. I'm doing what I love, and I get to do it every day. Mm-hmm. And it's it's my job, but it's also my passion. It's my vocation. It's my vacation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I see some people working day to day at jobs that uh, they wish they weren't in, and I I feel sorry for them because fortunately you're you're absolutely right. I've I've been able to spend my life uh, doing exactly what I love to do. And it really shows up on who you are not just come through physically but also emotionally and i've been using the term visceral connection i feel like that's very true to the presence you've had on me we've never met in person um and a lot of the people i interview i've known for 10 15 years and but i feel like somehow i i've already known a lot about you and we could sit down and you know really catch up and create a sequel but Without jumping ahead so much, I must say that when your name came across and Mr. O'Malley, as we all know, are very physically fit and has been a uh, competitor his whole life and now he's teaching a very impressive um, record as well. But when your name came up, he said to me, and this doesn't happen to Mr. O'Malley very much at all, as we know, um, he said, wow, Tom is impressive. His physicality is you have never guessed his age. Um, this is absolutely comes through as a compliment. And and I honestly, I thought to myself, you know, I've never met Tom and, and let me just look him up, let me study him. And I started looking at some of the Google images and I thought to myself, oh my God, <laughs> I had no idea, you know, how physically fit you are. It is incredible. And I thought to myself, you're someone who will be at the, you know, Muscle and Fitness magazine. And I'm looking at it right now, and you were actually featured in one of those magazines. Is that is that true? When was that? Um, yeah, there, gosh, there, were, there was a 10-year period where I was traveling and presenting fitness programs all around the country, and then even in internationally, you know, Venezuela and Canada. Mm-hmm. But um, so there, there were a lot of uh, opportunities there where interviews in different magazines, correct? And mm-hmm. um, and you know, you said something very interesting that that struck that just struck me just now, and that is um, when you asked earlier about um, maybe the impression I've made on other people. Oh, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, you you said you know the connect the visual connection. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, with what you do as as your work, you know, in in social media, you have a grasp on all this, and I don't. I I don't realize the impact of social media and all and all that. I don't even. I don't use Twitter. I, I use Facebook mm-hmm. just because. Uh, I guess a few years ago, a friend just said, you know, you you might as well get on Facebook. Everybody else is, and so I did. But but you're right. Social media. I mean. I'm looking at it now from the other end. I'm thinking about people I've connected with mm-hmm. on social media, including Michael O'Malley, and, and including some of my heroes from the past mm-hmm. who I've been able to connect with. And, yeah, I, I never thought of it that way, is, is that a person could be somewhat of a role model and not even know it just because, uh, you know, you're on Facebook, but you don't realize maybe that, you're connecting with people that you don't even know you're you're seeing or connecting with. Yeah, you have five thousand fans, which I don't. <laughs> and I... <laughs> now that no, no, there's an inside story to that. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I've got to tell you this. Um, <laughs> oh, about two years ago, two thousand. Oh, I guess it's been maybe two thousand eleven. 
Cash, somewhere around there. There was a TLC program that did a 15-minute segment on me. So I'm watching the show uh, live on TV, and at the same time, I have my laptop. And honest to God, this, this is the craziest thing. I believe it. Um, Oh, did you see the show? I believe it. I watch a lot of your videos oh. on YouTube. Oh, oh, okay. oh I'm waiting well, for the story. <laughs> well, what happened was while, while I was watching this television show on the TV, uh, the TLC network on regular TV, it was live, and all they said was my first name. They didn't say my last name, mm. but they said where I live, Mount Pleasant, Texas. So I'm getting like one Fred request, two, three, and that <laughs> one show. I got over a thousand friend requests just from that, that stupid show. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, when you say the 5,000 fans, uh, probably <laughs> one fifth of them were from that particular show. And then, then more of them trickled in later, you know, hours and hours later. But, Isn't yeah, it crazy? Me media, media is amazing. I, another mm -hmm. funny story, in my opinion. Um, I guess in the early 90s, around 1993, um, I was... I was featured in Sports Illustrated in a, in a full page. Mm -hmm. And, oh my gosh, did that create a change in my life? <laughs> I've, got, I've got companies, uh, Metrax, and I, I can't tell you, just a list of companies that, that said, oh, we saw you in Sports Illustrated, we'd like you to use our product. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, I was endorsing all these products, which just from that one interview, Mm -hmm. That one interview article changed my life. So you have media, you, you, what you do as your profession mm -hmm. uh, can change somebody's life. Oh, Tom, I, you have no idea. When I was looking at your website, I was already brainstorming so many ideas that could potentially enhance um, not just the current appearance, but also how you engage with businesses or companies that are interested in working with you, as well as some of the clients that you could pick up, you know, I, as one of the questions looking at your profile, um, is, you know, are you opening to taking on individual clients and things along that line as, as well, you know, social media is great for that, not just by engaging with new clients, but also you will able to gather their feedback directly to you where they might continue to share that out with their families and friends. And it's really fascinating, isn't it? It is. And, you know, you, you've opened up something like, like you, like we talked about earlier, this is a, a phase where, you know, I'm, I'm actually looking for a project and uh, something that's really, in my opinion, a, a horrible situation here in Texas. And I hope it's not happening across the country, but, mm -hmm. uh, all across Texas, as of starting now, literally 2015, uh, no longer is there going to be a physical education requirement in colleges. So mm -hmm. students down here in Texas no longer need to do any type of uh, physical activity while they attend school. Mm. So that's going to open up. <laughs> that, that could potentially give me a lot of free time. And I don't say that in a I'm trying to be optimistic, but uh, because PEE, you know, uh, physical education is no longer in our what we call our core curriculum, mm -hmm. then students won't take it because, you know, probably only 10% of my students at the college are, are doing it because they like it. You know, the rest of them, they have jobs, they, they have families, mm -hmm. and they don't have time to just take a karate class. Mm -hmm. So... This is going to really potentially hit, hit me hard. And with what you said about uh, opening up maybe my career by using some of these social media modalities, <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe something I'll be looking toward. I will be more than happy to help. Um, and I'm really serious about this. And this is something I always enjoyed. And, uh, you know, what's funny is, podcasting really has helped me connect with friends from 10, 15 years ago. And many of them are in a sort of a similar situation compared, compared to the one you're in for different reasons, possibly for different industries. So because of podcasting, after our interview, I've so far had dozens of phone calls, 
helping different businesses kind of enhance, you know, sort of the way they operate and their appearance on social media. Some of that is very, honestly, very trivial to me, managing a page and uh, staying engaged with your customers. But some of that information might not come across to them as intuitive. So I absolutely will be happy to extend this conversation. But I must say that I that makes me feel very sad, you know, that one policy can be rolled out so easily. I mean, when I say easily, I'm sure there are stakeholders and people who signed off on the decision. But people like yourself uh, are impacted. But moreover, it really are the students themselves who are impacted. Um, you know, I, I rarely talk about politics or religion on my podcast. But, you know, this is an area I, I love, you know, for you to open up in a way that um, it's not just self-promotion, but really talk about given your, your life and your ability to influence others. Um, I really want this podcast to be, a, to be an opportunity to kind of introduce you, celebrate your life and really your expertise, you know. Um, so with that said, I don't know, you should probably move up here. We'd we'll love to have you in New England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's actually funny. My, uh, my wife, her, her business, is, and it's, her, her company is called Classica, and it's, it's mm-hmm. a cookware company, but she, like you, she is so energetic, and, and she's, she's made it hugely successful. Mm. And as I was listening to you, I thought, oh my gosh, and her name is Linda. Linda could really mm-hmm. benefit from, from you as well because, uh, you know, she, she's so low-key. You know, mm-hmm. I, I even wonder how she gets her customers, but <laughs> I think for her, it, it's word of mouth for her. Mm-hmm. She, you know, she has a very low presence on Facebook. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's almost minuscule. And... Uh, do so much better, in my opinion, mm-hmm. with social media. But but you know, here here's the irony, and, and we'll certainly you can talk with her. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she's too busy already. I you know, um, we're actually building uh, a new building for her at this at this moment. Literally, we're you know we we just got the financing, and and so mm-hmm. it's it's going to be in construction and hopefully be done by the summer. And so she's busy with that, along with her continuing her sales. Mm-hmm. But uh, she, she's always telling me that you know she needs to get to the next level. That that's always her uh, mantra, you know. And so mm-hmm. uh, certainly after we're we're done with the podcast, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll get you connected. And maybe she might even be home by the time we get finished. We'll see how we go. Yeah, you know, uh, on on that note. My personal opinion is that the, on social media, when we talk about fans or followers, you know, the truly successful social presence isn't dependent on just simply the number of fans that you have, but really is the quality of the fans. This is not to misjudge people based on, you know, their backgrounds or anything. It's really talking about the level of engagement. Are they truly advocates or are they simply bored and got nothing better to do? <laughs> No, and, and you know, on this note, and I, you know, I, as I was thinking, as as you were speaking, mm-hmm. in the past, people have asked me. They say, do, "Do you have an agent?" You know, before social media, and I, I've never had an agent. I've never had someone go out and get me things. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of new to me. The, the process and in my head, I'm thinking, kind of like Linda, I guess. I'm, I'm like Linda in the old days. I'm thinking, well. Do I really need social media? Do I need Twitter? I've never, I've never done Twitter. Don't, don't even have a clue. I just, you know, hear people talk about it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I'm, I'm very open to, to these kind of opportunities now. Mm-hmm. You know, especially at this critical time where I have this freedom right now to, to pursue something different. You know, with, mm-hmm. regarding a different project. And I, and I guess I try to get my ego out of this mm-hmm. in the sense that you know, I thought. Well, in the past, I haven't had an agent. I don't, so, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't, quote, need social media. But what am I talking about? Of course I do. I mean, I'm going to survive without it. I'll be fine. But like you're saying, how many more people could be reached? And, you know, should we benefit and and vice versa? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of, eye-opening for me, where, you know, I, I see how social media has, has helped some projects and some companies, but uh, I, I probably
probably, I certainly don't know the, the magnitude of benefit that probably is out there. Oh, it's, it's really surprisingly significant in many regards. For instance, Tom, you may or may not have heard of a website called Quora. So it's something, don't worry, I will send in notes back to you as well. So long story short, Quora is a platform where people will go on and ask questions. They will ask any questions. It probably started off with something more um, academic and, um, you know, or technical topics related, but very quickly expanded out to many other topics. I am sure fitness will be a very popular one out there. But the difference between Quora and many other websites out there, Quora has a very specific uh, curation process. The content is so carefully moderated that when people read about a question, for instance, this is a question I'm going to uh, ask you, you know, what is the difference? Um, I have so many questions, I better prioritize them. It is, for instance, what is the difference between fitness level uh, between men and women? Are, are how truly different are they? How should women work out differently than men, for instance? And I will be waiting for your answer. And once you, somebody posed that question, it could be me on Quora. Many experts like yourself I, and non-experts who are making up answers will start posting. However, millions of users on Quora will start so-called voting up and down an answer. If they find something from you more comprehensive and knowing your background, having seen you on magazines, looking at your physicality, they might vote up your, your answer to be more accurate. And as a result, when other millions of users hit the question, your answer is going to be at the very top. So all of a sudden, on a very renowned platform such as Quora, you become a natural expert and people are going to be constantly coming to you. Quora is going to contact you directly to say, hey, Tom, did you know that there are 25 other fitness questions out there that we need people like you to answer? That is so interesting. Uh, let, me, let me ask if it's similar to this. I remember sometimes, and I don't know if you've ever done this, but sometimes I'll Google my name just to see what's out there because mm -hmm. sometimes there's crazy stuff. You know, I remember I Googled one time and some guy said that I, that, that Tom Seaborn said that uh, sprinters are muscular because they sprint. Well, he kind of got the story half right, but so in other words, I was kind of misquoted. Mm -hmm. But, but on, on one of my things that I Googled, I, I Googled something where it said, it was almost like what you just described with Cora, mm -hmm. where it said like the top 10 answers and it was to a fitness question. And I didn't, I don't even remember being asked it. It had my name, like you just said, as the top answer or something to a, to a fitness question. I can't even remember what it was now, but is that similar to what you're saying? And, and I didn't even know, but it, it, see, how come I didn't even know that the question was being asked me? Maybe, maybe it was in an interview or something and then someone pulled it off or, you know, they're like, I don't know. But, but that, when, when you were speaking about Cora, that just came into my mind that somehow, <laughs> My, my uh, answer to a question, and it, it, it may have been some question like uh, people overtrain, that they, uh, they need to take a day off, and once they take a day off, mm -hmm. their benefits are enhanced. It, it was something similar to that. And I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm up, up barking at the wrong fee right now, but I just, this is really interesting to me. And, and along these lines, I, let me just say this, and... Mm -hmm. um, you can, you can help me with this, whether I'm on, on the right track or not, but I'm in a very small town, mm -hmm. and I would love to get the word out. You were, you know, you were, we were talking before about you know, different projects or ideas, and either, either through, I love what you're doing, you know, podcasts or, uh, you know, doing something better with YouTube, you know, more, mm -hmm. you know, the, you, you said that you saw a couple of my YouTube things, and, and these are so amateurish. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't have a videographer, I just have a friend, or sometimes just myself, you know, doing the, the, the filming, uh, so, so to say. So, uh, that, that would be something I'm, I'm very interested in doing, is, is getting the word out mm -hmm. on, on fitness, and some of the questions people do have, and answering them. But I don't know, I, 
how to do it. I don't, I don't have an expert in this area in, in my little town of Mount Pleasant that can help me with a podcast or with a, um, you know, the video, video, uh, videography. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, keep that in the back of your mind. Maybe remotely you have something that works, you know, that you wouldn't have to necessarily come all this way, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Keep, I don't know. I've... Keep that I might have to come all the way because I heard there are fried Oreo cookies in Texas. I'm very intrigued. This is what, what got me away from traveling. This is what I'm going to say when you, when you hopefully come visit. You have to fly into DFW. And mm-hmm. Then you have to make a two and a half hour drive to get to our little town. And when I was traveling, I traveled for 10 years. And... I finally just burned out on driving to the airport. Just if you have to leave like four to five hours earlier. Wow. To make sure, you know, well, imagine in Boston, you know, like right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only been to Boston twice, and just the, the traffic and the way people drive there was crazy. <laughs> if I remember. <laughs> but, uh, but Especially Dallas, today. Uh, da- Dallas, we don't we don't have the you know we don't have the weather problems that you guys have, mm-hmm. but you know the traffic types and so. I got so tired of just the flight delays and then sitting in airports that, that I completely quit. Mm-hmm. The, 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 you know, and I, I was thinking when, when the PE was taken out of the core curriculum, I thought, well, maybe I'll go back on the travel circuit, but gosh, I'd like to find a way to do things from here and so I don't have to do that kind of travel anymore. Uh, the good news is here. There is no better era than now that for someone like you, um, I hope you don't mind me calling a fitness guru, to really be able to influence and educate people all around the world. Let me give you a couple of examples. And, you know, I don't obviously don't want to make about uh, make this podcast all about me, but I really had a few thoughts based on what you said in the past five minutes or so is one, there are a lot of people and I can send some of their names over to you. And those are the fitness gurus I typically follow them. They're all male. And yes, ideally that I would like a mix of a female in there as well, is that they literally work from their living room. These are the fitness gurus who will produce videos, for instance, on YouTube. And not only that, on YouTube, they will provide instructions. And as you know, YouTube has a description section, but that alone isn't enough. These guys will send down newsletters. Um, to their fans and obviously the fans will subscribe to their newsletters and this is where we talk about sequencing of perhaps every day is too much too much work for for you too much information for me to digest but instead what if it's once a week what if it's every other week you could send out the list of your activity you can even mention what you're doing in your life you can target information people in their 20s 30s 40s 50s or even older um it's really magical. You can educate them from a distance. These days, there are applications out there that allows you to receive videos from, let's just say that, anybody in the world. And they're going to ask a question. Tom, this is how I am um, practicing training my biceps. Am I doing the right thing? And you are able to get that video and you're able to draw on that video and tell them exactly what they're doing right and wrong. You can literally draw and edit that video and send, compile it and send it back to them. Yeah. And that alone can become a service that you could have clients for. And so really it's not about constantly be on the road unless you are a public speaker, for instance, and that is your motivational speaker. You have to be on the road. Um, but you could really balance that out, like 20% travel, 20% working from your living room. So a lot of wow. things that... Yeah. Yeah, a lot of things I want you to think about, but I also want to comment on another thing is people on the internet, trust me, there are a lot of people who, there there are better terms to describe them, but people can get very evil on the internet. The reason is because they don't have to show their name and everything's anonymous. And you literally, you follow a thread on YouTube. It could be a picture uh, of a cute little baby. It could be a 12-year-old girl. Within that comments area, you're going to see all kinds of evil stuff. You know, I'm not, our, our podcast is currently clean. I, there are a lot of explicit stuff in there. And 
makes you really question the human race. So with that said, when somebody says or misquote you, misquote you is one thing, and or quote you but taking your answer completely out of context, right? And this is why a podcast by you or the fact that you're on my podcast and hearing directly from you is way more ideal than somebody else trying to represent you. But the good news is they're not representing you. And oh, I think one, two parts of the good news. Good news that people want to quote you, that means you are known, you're famous. Nobody has ever tried to quote me yet. Faye said X, Y, and Z. And, you know, so that's part one. Part two is, you know, even if they don't mean, if even they meant no harm, they could still take things out of context and therefore becomes inaccurate. And I know that as um, an expert yourself, when you see things like that, you might think to yourself, oh, that that exercise no longer accurate, that could actually harm people and people shouldn't be talking about it and shouldn't put my name as a label next to it. That's going to happen. And I think that's why for you to become an expert on a website like Guru, uh, Guru, like Quora, and, and be able to, you become a curator. And that actually leads to my next question. I think it's a, it's a movement and for you it's an obligation. And the reason for that is there's so much information out there these days. Think about when you were, you know, 20 years old. You probably knew these three to five people, if that, to go to. And then they will offer you world-class advice. And you're training with, you know, people like Mr. O'Malley. And best of your guys are, are best in class. Now, it's hard to tell who's the best out there. And I know this from the music industry, from the art in- industry. And we have a, I have a lot of musicians or artists in my family. And my mom in particular is an artist. And whenever we go to the gallery, we're standing there thinking to ourselves, what are they selling here? And we go to the Modern Art Museum. You see duct tapes floating on the surface, and that's called art. And it just blows our mind. And yet these artists, possibly in their 20s and 30s, are making millions of dollars. And people, are they, they got followings, right? And <laughs> it's comical, and it breaks people's heart. Um, but my, I think it's an obligation for you to become that filter, because you know what works and what doesn't. And so, you know, you become an influencer and really help people like myself and millions out there to know what is the right information, what works and what doesn't. So with that said, um, I guess my question to you is, you know, let's talk about your day for a second. How, you know, when do you, when do you get up? What is your exercise routine look like and I hope at this point of the podcast people are already googling you and, and seeing how you look and it, very naturally too so I wonder how you conduct your conditioning exercise and, and live your life first of all let me say that um, you, you are a motivator I mean as I was you know I was listening <laughs> and I was I didn't want to break in to, to just to acknowledge all of the wonderful points that you're making and uh, you're, you're, for your, and I know you're a lot younger than me, and I'm thinking, what a wealth of knowledge you have already. And, oh, thank well, you. And, and with, well, with that, um, yeah, I get up at 4 o'clock, and uh, <laughs> oh, man. It, it, it's, funny, it's funny that you ask that, because uh, I always ask my wife, I'll say, shall I set the alarm for 6? Because, um, and I'll say that at night. And, uh, you know, some days yes, some days no, because I don't, I don't set the alarm for me. And I, I would just naturally wake up at four. It's, it's become a habit. And, and the only reason I do that, say, is because I've got to get to our facility before everybody else does. Because if once, you know, once the day starts and people start coming in, then, then I, I, I don't have any privacy. So I, I get there early to get my own workout in. So, so I get there from 4 to 5. So I, I get up at 4, get there about 4.30, go from 4.30 to about 5.30 before people start coming in. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then all of a sudden there, there, there it goes, you know, that's my own personal workout that early in the morning time. And then the, the good fortune in, about answering the rest of your question about, you know, the rest of the day, is that at this point in my life, I'm still able to teach activity classes. So I'll teach a 
weight training class, then a tennis class, then a karate class, then a spinning class. So you can see I just teach activity classes back to back, and then there's some act, uh, academic classes involved in there, a group class called Fitness for Life. I have a couple sections of those. So as a teacher, and I love working out with my students. And you know, for example, my karate class today, I, I can't imagine doing anything else in my life. And my, my wife knows this, and it's kind of scary. And that is, I would do this if I wasn't getting paid. I, I love it. And, you know, being around people that, that truly value what you have to say. I've, I've been in different parts of the country, like Houston, where you're in a city, then, you know, and, and I don't know if it's similar to Boston, but, uh, you know, just like you, you were talking in, when, in your, when, you were, when you were speaking a few minutes ago, you don't know if someone's legitimate or not. Mm -hmm. You really don't. And so I, I, I'm not very good at self-promotion. I mean, it, it may look like it when, when you see some of the things that I've done, but, but I really am not that good. And, and I also have a really hard time talking about myself. For example, in my classes, never mention any of these kind of cool anecdotal experiences like like what happened in the world championships or uh, because I don't know if it happened the same in Boston but here's what happened in, in Mount Pleasant mm -hmm. let's say uh, like in my karate class today I will talk about my students like I have one student who got into the UFC uh, ultimate fighting championships and he uh, you know, he was a, he was a, pro a prolific student, and, and so my students gravitate when I talk about him. But if I were to talk about myself, I, I don't know what it is here in this town. But it's almost like people look away; they don't want to hear it. And now, mm -hmm. I, I still don't get it because it's not as if I'm going to spend an hour talking about this anecdote that happened at the World Championships. But it's almost like, and, and, I, and I wonder if it's peculiar to this town, that people don't want other people to succeed. It's a crazy thing. It's almost a jealousy, I feel. So I don't ever bring it up in mm -hmm. my classes. And, and, you know, being on a podcast, I'm, you know, feeling more able to speak about kind of the, um, you know, maybe a little bit of self-promotion. Well, first of all, because I can't see the people listening. And then, and secondly, why, you know, they would want to know uh, about, about certain events. So, in answer to your question, I start at four in the morning, and mm -hmm. then uh, I have teaching experiences all day long, which mostly involve activity. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And when I used to have a project, uh, and I don't know if you're the same way, but mm -hmm. I, I look at the project, whether it's a book or uh, whatever it is, it would just always be in the back of my mind that it was like I would be, when, whenever there was a, a kind of a neutral part of the day where I, I didn't have to be focused on something, mm -hmm. then my mind would just immediately just be drawn toward that project. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's my day right now. That's that's really interesting and it's it's kind of funny that i don't even need to look at my list of questions anymore and you've triggered all these thoughts um, and and really inspired me to really think about who we are and i must say on the point of do people really care about you what you have accomplished it's true some people don't and some people feel a sense of jealousy and you know, I'm, you know, I'm 30 and, and um, I look back, I feel like I grew up in Beijing. I grew up in, in Chinese culture. My parents are not the tiger mom or dad, but I grew up in a culture where, you know, it is not cool for you to constantly be promoting yourselves or even prom promoting yourself at all. I remember being in kindergarten and early um, <clears throat> In elementary school, I would raise my I would raise my hand, be excited about things. But even very quickly, when I was eight or nine, it's like, okay, don't 
look so excited. Simmer down. <laughs> Calm down. Everything is down. And and that that energy is kind of carried and stayed with me for quite some time. And I started revisiting that. And I must say that it could be the people around you, but also means that maybe there's some insecurities that they're dealing with. What if, you know, what if one day, right? Sometimes I feel like, let me just break out of the sh my own shell and just do something that scares me. And that's my thing these days. I want to do something that scares me every single day. I want to challenge myself as a 30-year-old because, you know what? Most 30-year-olds think that there's something that they will lose, right? You're old enough to know better. You are in, if you have a career that you've been holding on to since you're 22 right now in, in about mid-management, I cannot afford to embarrass myself, right? No, I think that's actually wrong. I would love to embarrass myself and dance around in the office. So maybe I'll give you a assignment, Tom. What if you go to your gym class? Or what if you meet some parents one day and you stand in front of a crowd and say, my name is Tom and, you know, these are the things I've done, even if they're three things, and tell them I'm working a project and I don't care what that is, right? Maybe I'm starting a social media website and I don't know exactly what I'm doing or I'm starting a podcast or Faye and I collaborate on this podcast. I really want you to listen to it and give, give me some feedback. And I'm curious to see how they respond because their responses may surprise you big time. What if they share the same fears? Right? What if they're interested in your podcast? They understand what you're going through right now. Because both of us assume, have always assumed they don't. What if they do? How would that change your world? How would it change the world? How would it change? What if all connected? You know? Wow. So. Well, you're, you're, saying, you're saying so much. My gosh, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, you're, from, from the beginning of, the, of, of this kind of uh, discussion just now, where. You know, you, I, I needed to hit on this again where you, you talked about, you know, not, not raising your hand. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the fact that some of the people, and I think you hit the nail on the head, in this little town, you know, I think there's a lot of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Unlike Dallas or Boston where people are more sure of themselves. And then everything else you're saying, uh, you know, you're, you're wise beyond your years. And, and uh, you, you and my wife are about same age, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I, I feel the same about both of you, you know, she, she's also very wise, and, and for, for you to put your words together the way you're doing, you know, getting this content, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I'll be excited to listen to when you do edit all this, and <laughs> I can't imagine, I cannot imagine, and I had no idea <laughs> that you edited, that you edited the podcast, I mean, when I listened to uh, Mr. O'Malley and you, it sounded just like a free flow of con you know conversation without mm -hmm. any additions. So, oh, yeah, it, it was. It, you know, Tom, it really depends. And I cut very little out of the podcast because it's meant to be a conversation. And with Mr. O'Malley, it was not rehearsed. And with many of my guests, it just was uh, free flow. Uh, for our recording, you know, Part of the reason was because uh, my technical difficulties on my end. <laughs> um, but moreover, I really want to thank you because for a lot of my episodes, I didn't really let myself out because my guests, just like you, very knowledgeable. Uh, I'm sure they could talk on for hours even without any of my facilitation. But my my audience said to me that Faye you know, we like your podcast, a few things we would like you to change. We do want to hear more from you. And we want your yeah. voice and your energy to come through. Whereas at the beginning, just like what you're saying, I felt like it's about my guests. It's not about me. And so other than questions, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, I agree, thank you. And I didn't really say all that much. Uh, my guests were great. So I'm so glad that this is really a conversation and exchange, a very authentic exchange I didn't quite expect. So I won't edit all well, that much yeah. out. And, 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 you know, when, as you're speaking, I, I'm thinking of, listen, you know, and again, I only have the reference of uh, television uh, hosts on television. Like, you know, think of Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. people, people watch Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, they want to see the, the guests like Tom Cruise or something. But they really want to hear Oprah Winfrey. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think that you should definitely pull from that, that uh, because you do have the wisdom and knowledge at a young age, and uh, you have the excitement in your voice that definitely I can understand your uh, fans where they're saying, hey, we want to hear from you too. Yeah, I, absolutely. To listen to more episodes of the Face World podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or visit faceworld.com. That is F E I S W O R L D, where you can find show notes, links, other tools, and resources. You can also follow me on Twitter at Face World. Until next time, thanks for listening.